That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Oxygen, the ninth film directed by Alexander Aja, which will be released May 12th, 2021 on Netflix. Uh, I know I really liked his film Crawl. Yes. Uh, his last film, 2019. Um, I've long been a fan of Aja's since his 2003 film High Tension, starring, mm. starring Cécile de France. That's him. And My Wen. I also um, really enjoy that film. And Philip Nehan, who's now dead. Um, and his remake of The Hills Have Eyes in 2006. That's right. He made he remade a South Korean film called, um, starring Kiefer Sutherland called Mirrors in 2008, which I didn't love. Uh, Piranha 3D. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Horns uh, with Daniel Radcliffe, uh, which I believe I got to interview him over that. Um, I wasn't a fan of it, though. Uh, adapted from a novel by Stephen King's kid. And I really hated The Ninth Life of Louis Drax um, with Aaron Paul, which was 2016. So this is, he, uh, to me, he's making kind of an interesting comeback. Um, it's produced by a regular team of people he works with, Gregory Levassier, Levasseur, uh, Frank Calfoon, uh, Vincent Maribel is uh, notably a producer as well. Um, but it stars uh, an actress and director in her own right that I'm a big fan of, Melanie Laurent. Um, we get to see a lot of her up close and personal and her limbo rings. Oh, limbo rings. So this is a sci-fi thriller. Mm -hmm. It opens with the main character. Who we come to be known as named Elizabeth Hansen. Yeah, who I keep calling Sally Hansen. Do um, you mean like Sally Ride? No, like the beauty products. Oh, okay. not the... <laughs> I did that because I know like they do nails. And... Anyway, we find her stuck in some sort of pod. Like uh, when characters in sci-fi movies are like cryo, like put into like cryo sleep. It's, it's one of those pods, but it's a little more elaborate. It offers her like, um, it can provide like medical attention. She's attached to like IVs and like some sort of... Uh, it, like tracks like her brain activity it, it actually opens with her breaking through it, it looks like, like a, a cocoon it looks like a birth actually yeah she's encased in something and it also has like a siri type operating system with like a monitor that can interact with her but it's referred to as milo milo and i thought i wrote it down like forgot that I uh, <laughs> yeah something uh, it's notably it's noise it's noised it's voiced by Matthew Amalric it's an acronym, so M-I-L-O, mm -hmm. Milo. So she does it like how you do Siri. Mm -hmm. So she wakes up and, of course, is in a panic because she's in this coffin, a la that Ryan Reynolds movie, Buried. 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 How do you, is that how you say it? Buried. Not buried? You, depends on where you're from, I guess. I like buried. Buried. You've been buried. You've been buried. Which was a Rodrigo Cortez film who directed Red Lights with Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> um... Uh, I just lost my train of So, so Melanie Liz Hansen uh, wakes oh, up. Oh, so she's trying to figure out what's going on. She's talking to Milo. Milo is a stubborn little thing. Mm -hmm. So this operating system is very specific. And I'm assuming it was designed that way once you hear what the story is. But he doesn't like divulge information very easily. She has to be very specific. So... A like a bulk of the first part of the movie is her attempting to just understand where she is, what's happening, attempting to call for help. Like she calls authorities. Mm -hmm. She's able to connect to the police. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you got to tell us like where you are. We don't know. Like tell us the serial number of your, um, like the pod you're in. And we also see that she's having flashbacks as if like her memory was lost and mm -hmm. she's regaining it. Mm -hmm. But just to make this quick, we find out that mankind on Earth is... Oh, but, uh, you should back up. The reason that she woke up in the pod is because her oxygen level is at 34%. Oh, yeah. The name of the film is Oxygen, and her oxygen level is low, and there's like a race for her to figure out what her next step is because Milo tells her, like, the amount of oxygen you have right now should last you about 77 minutes, but the way you're breathing, you got like 43 minutes. Okay. So major spoiler now. As always, mankind on Earth is going to die after two generations. Mm -hmm. And there's no stopping it. 
So we find out that the woman in this pod, Dr. Sally Hansen, she is she does like cryogenics, mm -hmm. which is I'm, I'm assuming she was involved in the technology that allowed her to be asleep all this time. But the pod she's in is part of a spacecraft that has 10,000 other pods. Mm -hmm. And this this spacecraft is headed to some planet far, far away that's going to recolonize mankind. Mm -hmm. But another gag is that the the per she in the pod, Milo's referring to her as a bioform. So all 10,000 of these pods are all like filled with bioforms. We also find out that Dr. Hansen did research in like memory transfer. And she explains how like it's just biochemistry and mm -hmm. receptors and whatever. And that you can take that formula, those chemicals, and transfer to another uh, being, and they will have the same knowledge and memories. Mm -hmm. There's another device or visual that we see a lot, which is like a mouse running through a maze. Mm -hmm. And that mouse represents her research in that she had a mouse that had been trained to complete a maze. Then she took that mouse's chemist biochemistry, transplanted it to a different mouse, place that mouse into the maze and that mouse was able to solve the maze as well. Mm -hmm. So we find out that all of the bioforms on the spacecraft are clones. Mm -hmm. They're not the actual humans on earth. So these bioforms are clones and they've all been given the knowledge and memory of their um, human counterpart. So it's clones who know everything that their humans know being sent to this new planet to colonize. And part of her figuring that out is the a woman, she figures out that she used to be romantically involved with this man, Leo Ferguson, played by Malik Zidi, who starred in Nicolas Boucrief's Made in France. Uh, Boucrief was, uh, we just brought him up in another review for Wrath of Man. Anyway, uh, who died of a virus that's also kind of been rampaged people on Earth, as we learn. Uh, but the numbers she finds for him, through Milo, uh, she ends up contacting what ends up being herself. Right. The, the, the human form of Elizabeth Hansen. So as she's speaking to her human form, she's telling herself, like, you know everything you need to know to figure this out. I really can't help you. You need to remember. So she does. But the other gag is Milo tells her, you know, you have to go back into cryosleep because you have many years ahead of you. They've only been traveling for 12 years and the total trip takes like 34 years. Mm -hmm. So you need to go back to sleep. But if your oxygen level hits below 2%, you we won't be able to resuscitate you. So there's a race for her to figure out what's happening before she hits 2% and she's not successful. It gets down to like 0.6%. So Milo tells her like, yeah, I can put you to sleep, but you're not gonna be able to wake up. So the most frustrating part of the story to me is Milo and how it doles out information. But I think it's necessary for how the film ends because she's just asking it a million questions, a million different ways, trying to figure out the truth. And finally, he tells, she's able to extract from Milo that there are these 10,000 bioforms and about 500 of them were damaged. And we see them, like some of them are floating in space and some are just like cracked. So she says, hey Milo, is there oxygen in those damaged pods? And he says, yes, they're like at full capacity. So she's like, well, can you transfer that oxygen to me? And he says, yes. <laughs> so she's like, why did you do this in the first place? And then he says, well, it takes, like, there's a certain security clearance that requires that, so you can't do it. But if we do a different way, it'll take 14,000 minutes, mm -hmm. and you're going to run out of oxygen by then. So all hope is lost. But then Milo says, oh, but I can put you in cryosleep or hypersleep, and then I can transfer the oxygen while you sleep. Like, yeah, stupid, do that. So he does that. So he puts her back, into, back to sleep transfers the oxygen and it's successful. The end of the film is her, we see her and her man Leo on the new planet. But they're clones of each other. But they're clones and they're sort of looking 
over the horizon and we see like multiple moons in the sky the end yes yeah um, and so your frustration with Milo, uh, but I think that is, he's, Milo is kind of a little bit more realistic of what AI would be even in the near future, as opposed to like the malevolent forms of uh, AI we've seen in films of this ilk, like 2001 A Space Odyssey or Moon. Um, You're right. You're right. I, 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 I think it is effective. I just think for the first 30 minutes, it was just kind of... It wasn't very satisfying to watch this person stuck in this thing talking to this operating system that's kind of beating around the bush and not really telling her anything. It didn't seem very helpful. In the end, it makes sense why it's not helpful because it doesn't want anyone to sort of trip up the like the mission. But I think because, you know, I didn't know that it was a little dry. Sure. And I did fall asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep for like 15 minutes. Yes, um, Melanie Laurent, I think, does a decent job. I do think there is kind of a lack of anxiety or tension that I was hoping I would feel that I don't really. Um, but the gag ends up feeling a bit like another Duncan Jones movie, Source Code, with Jake Gyllenhaal, um, just, a, just a little bit, which I, I kind of didn't mind where it ended up going. Um, no, um... My only other gripe is I think, you know, ever since Gravity, we get a lot of films set in outer space that the visuals are very strong. Sure. Right? They're almost strong enough oftentimes to stowaway, supplement basically. for um, kind of ridiculous stories. But this film, the visuals weren't... I, think I mean, the bulk of it's set in this pod, but... I think the dependence is supposed to be the claustrophobia we're meant to feel... Uh, but again, there, there are a lot of flashbacks. Um, it was lens by Maxime Alexander, uh, who uh, did crawl. But, uh, you know, I did, there, there towards the end, there are some shots of her in this, um, in that pod that kind of looked like religious iconography. Um, okay. I, I think there are some very interesting visual choices, aesthetic choices sure. uh, for what it is. Sure. Um... But that being said, I didn't think this film felt as expensive as some other outer space films we've seen recently. Sure. Which was a little disappointing in conjunction with, I thought a lot of the flashback scenes seemed, I don't know, I know they are maybe supposed to look foggy and hazy because she's trying to recall things. and mm -hmm. But then there's like a scene where we see her aged mm -hmm. and it was very like community theater makeup to me. I, I did think of uh, Colleen Gray in The Leech Woman. Yeah. Um, but that said, I think, you know, for an actor to carry this much weight uh, on their shoulders, I think Laurent does a, a good job. Um, I, I, of the film she's directed, I've only seen Respire, uh, Breathe, which I liked well enough. But, you know, Inglorious Bastard, she did, I think I first uh, re um, focused on her in this 2007 movie with Isabelle Huppert, where she plays her daughter called Hidden Love. Uh, it, her mother hates her daughter. Uh, it's a very unhappy movie. Um, I've just... <laughs> you've seen her in Beginners with Christopher Plummer recall. and Ewan McGregor. You were very annoyed at the movie. That's the one where Christopher Plummer won the Oscar. I'm, I know the movie, but I don't recall her. She's the love interest. I don't recall. Anyhow. Um, yes. Uh, overall, I, I, I was excited to see this film, and I was uh, overall happy with it. I'd recommend Crawl. Okay. You know, I really like that movie. I know you did. Yes. It's a, good, I, it's a good creature feature. I enjoyed this movie enough. I mean, Aja, I, I wrote a paper as an undergrad about um, high tension of hills and hills have eyes with the point I thought he was making with this brutal butchering of the nuclear familial unit. Um, oh, you, you can't talk about the f nuclear familial unit. People don't like that. Oh, well, I don't really like that as an institution. Uh, you know, Aja, back when he was... Uh, first coming around in the mid to late 2000s, he was kind of lumped in with what was called the Splat Pack, with like Xavier Jens and Rob Zombie and uh, the two that did Inside, Alexander Bustillo and Julian Mori. Um, so he's kind of, uh, I, I remember he had a hard time making high tension in France because of the violence. It's much easier to make violent films in America, but he's kind of uh, gone back and he's ricocheted a bit and uh, it's nice to see uh, him elevated a little bit too. What would you give this film? Uh, three out of five. I would give it three out of five as well. Thank you. Bye.